the colorful world, especially the topic completed in our last class is angle of vision. So what is angle of vision actually? It is simply a maximum angle to see the whole object without changing the view. That means top and bottom of the object at a time. Top and bottom of the object at a time without changing the view. So here it is possible for the healthy eye is 60 degrees. If the angle is more than 60 degrees, that object height estimated eyes enlarged, but it is same height. By the eye, it can be viewed eyes enlarged. If it is smaller than 60 degrees, we can see that same object eyes diminished. Right? So this we observed uh, in the last class. In today's class, we are discussing about uh, structure of eye. So before going for that uh, structure of eye, what are the external parts of eye? So how do we see external view of the eye? So this is external view of the eye. Here, what are the parts we are able to see externally? Right? So look at them. Here, the white color part we can see in our eye that is called as here sclera right sclera is a white color part in our eyeball externally we are able to see that then here look at that a colorful part is visible this colorful part is called as here irish what we can call this as a colorful part present in our eye is irish then one more part we are able to see externally that is here a black spot that dark color inside that uh, irish that we can call it as here pupil so these parts we are able to see externally here we are unable to see any part internally so here that uh, we can see structure right by uh, sections are the transversal and uh, longitudinal sections in your biology right so whatever it may be here, we are able to see that uh, internal parts of the eye. So here, simply it is outline of your eyeball. Right? Outline of your eyeball. Here, the front portion somewhat protruded out. Right? Bulged out. Right? Here, this is outline. Here, from the outside, what the first part we can reach here is that is a transparent protective membrane is present on the eyeball that we can call it as here cornea. The first part we can reach is here cornea, right? Transparent layer it is. Then here after crossing that, going inside the cornea, what we have a liquid is present. A liquid is filled. That liquid is here aqueous humor. It is a transparent liquid present behind the cornea. That uh, liquid is aqueous humor. After that, we have two parts. What we observed externally, that is a colorful part and uh, a black colored uh, spot is observed. That is here simply Irish and uh, pupil. So what these are connected with them? Here they are ciliary muscles actually. They are what? Ciliary muscles. Here, with them, we have connection to the pupil. Right? What this black colored spot is? Pupil. Then around it, we have one more uh, part uh, that is here, Irish. That is what? Irish. Then inside that, behind that, we have a crystalline lens structure that is here, double convex uh, lens, eye lens. What it is? Eye lens. Then we have contact with this lens, a muzzle, right? That what ciliary muscles only to change its uh, focal length, right? Then we have a vitreous humor after this, right? Then muscular parts, nerves, many parts are there. We are not going to discuss about them, right? At end, we have one more part that we can call it as here screen, which can form the image, right? 
that image is formed by the lens on the screen that retina is acting like a screen. Here we have a distance between these retina to the lens, right? So retina to the lens or lens to the retina, this distance is fixed to anybody, right? That distance is 2.50 centimeters, lens to the retina. Then here we have many number of nerves present in our eye. So these nerves are called as here optic nerves. What they are called as here? Optic nerves. These optic nerves are connected to the screen, right? These optic nerves are connected to the screen. Here, these are called as here receptors. What these are called as here? Receptors that which are connected to the screen called the retina. So here, these are of two types. Receptor of two types. What they are here? Depending on the shape, we can name them as here rods. Right? These are up in this shape. So that's why they are called as rods. Then one more is there in the shape of cone. So that is why here they are called as cones. We have importance for these uh, parts. Here, simply, aqueous humor is what? It is a transparent liquid. Transparent liquid. So light can be propagated through this. It can allow the light to propagate. Pupil, simply it is a hole. Cornea, a transparent protective membrane. It is a protective membrane. A layer present on our eyeball to protect from the dust and uh, other particles, water, everything, which will not be allowed inside. Right? Completely, it will obstruct anything. Lens, double convex lens, right? Muzzles, which helps us to change the focal length of eye lens, right? It will change F of eye lens, focal length of the lens. Irish, it is a colorful pot, which has a hole in it, right? That helps to change the area of a pupil, right? Then here, optic nerves, they can uh, transfer the signals to the brain. Retina act as the screen, right? So these are the internal parts of your eye. Have you seen them clearly? What the parts internally we have? Is it clear, everyone? So every detail is given in your textbook. I have shown that parts internally where we have in our eye, right? So these are the parts involved in our eye internally. Let us go to another here. Just small discussion about the parts only. Here, what they are here. The first part we can see is cornea. It is a protective membrane, which is in transparent. Completely, it is a transparent protective membrane. Completely, it covers the eyeball. Our eyeball is covered by cornea, a layer that which protects us from the dust, water, any other particles obstructed, do not allow inside the eye, right? So only it is stopped at the surface, right? Only it can allow the light because it is transparent. It is transparent. Then here, after that, we have one more that is here simply aqueous humor, right? It is also transparent. A liquid is filled inside the cornea. Right, that is allowing the light inside. Then we have one more part. It is iris. It is a muscular diaphragm. What is actually muscular diaphragm? It can contract. It can expand. Right, iris can contract and it can expand. So here, it is flexible. Itself, it can adjust. By adjusting itself, it can control the pupil. What it hides the hole inside that pupil will be adjusted, adjusted by this muscular diaphragm, right? To contract and to open, right? So here, simply it is around the pupil. Then here, what is pupil actually? Pupil appears uh, black completely in a uh, Irish. So here that pupil, because of no reflection, appearing as black in color. 
completely it can allow the light through that hole inside the eyeball do not reflect any light which falls on pupil that is the reason to see the pupil in a black color right so here this pupil will be controlled by the muscular diaphragm called iris that iris enables the pupil to act like a variable aperture iris helps the pupil to act like a variable aperture right so here pupil is controlling the pupil is controlling the amount of light entering into your eyeball right on contracting it can allow the minimum light right on expanding it can allow the maximum light that is the function of pupil here right the next here it is acting like a variable aperture with the help of iris the next we will go for another part we have one more part behind this aqueous humor called a lens a crystalline structure right but flexible not a solid crystalline structure only but not solid it is uh, is a semi solid like that right flexible right that convex lens is present or situated in your eye which can form the real inverted and diminished image always on the retina so here the these are the characteristics the image which is formed on the screen screen is retina right that is situated at a distance 2.5 cm from the eye lens which can capture the image on the screen as a real inverted and diminished then here that uh, are connected with optic nerves called as rods and cones rods identify the intensity of light cones identify the color of light so with the help of these optic nerves the brain can receive the electromagnetic waves that can be analyzed and again it is reversed right actually on the screen you are getting a real inverted diminished image but your brain can analyze that information and uh, improves that right exactly reversing correct what uh, that uh, shape or size is same as your original object then here ciliary muscles are able to change the focal length of uh, eye lens by changing the shape of the lens that means simply radius of curvature of the lens will be controlled by the ciliary muscles here how they can control simply here simply here that radius of curvature will be increased or decreased by the ciliary muscles on contracting and uh, relaxed when they relax it can change the focal length to the maximum focal length is called 2.50 cm and the minimum focal length is adjusted by the ciliary muscles if they get strained right so these are the internal parts and functions right so here we have the focal length of eye lens varying between 2.50 to 2.27 or 2.27 to 2.50 right so this is simply carried by ciliary muscles this adjustment of the focal length from minimum to maximum or maximum to the minimum is called as accommodation of a lens right accommodation carried by the ciliary muscles if they are failed called as defect because that uh, retina which is acting like a screen cannot capture the image at the same distance that image will be shifted less than to 2.50 or above 2.50 because of failure of ciliary muscles right they are called as accommodation defects let me let us discuss them detailed but before going that we have a small discussion about the understanding right here what we understood how can we get same image distance for various positions of object in a uh, what a fourth lesson we learned what they are here about convex lens and uh, about concave lens right here especially in our eye we have double convex lens right so here 
according to the change in the position of the object in front of the eye, in front of the, sorry, lens, right? That can change the image distance, right? For example, here I am showing you the image. Here I am showing you the image at a particular dis distance for a particular position of a object. Suppose here it is the pole. Here it is the focus. Here it is its center of curvature. Right? If I place the object at a particular distance in front of the lens. Right? Here, suppose let me take the object at a certain distance called here. Center of curvature. What is the image position? What are the characteristics? So here you will get the image for this position exactly at center of curvature. Real, inverted and same size, right? If the object shifted to this position between P and F having the same height, what will be the type of image here? The image will be formed by the convex lens is here, it is virtual magnified image, right? Virtual magnified image. So here, according to the position, the image is formed at same distance by the lens. Always? No. Here, the image shifted to various positions or various uh, distances according to the object distance. As are you following? According to the object distance, image position always changing. It is not fixed. Image position always changing according to the position of the object. Then here the question is, why not the position of image not changing according to the position of object in front of your eye? Suppose if you observe the sky at very far distance is there, then what are the characteristics? It is diminished on the screen. Okay. If the image, something object in front of you, suppose you are uh, observing the screen now in front of you at a uh, uh, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters or maximum 1 meter distance from you. Then here in this case also you are getting or you are able to see that. You are able to see the object means simply the image is on the screen. Always how it can be formed the image on screen at 2.50 centimeters without changing image distance according to the object position. Here for any distance, they are what? Minimum distance to maximum distance of object. Right? It is from minimum distance to the maximum distance. Your image always on the screen. Right? Image always on the screen. Right? Here it is because of what? Just by the changing of focal length of your eyelids, right? That which is carried by the ciliary muscles. If the focal length of eyelids not changed, it remains constant, what happens? What happens? What happens? You are unable to get the image always on the screen, right? To get the image always on the screen, irrespective to the position of objects in front of your eye, just we are depending on the focal length of islands, that focal length always varying. So islands with varying focal length. Are you clear about that? Islands is with the varying focal length. If that unable to change its focal length, automatically you are unable to see your surroundings. That is the meaning of question here. Can you answer this question using concepts of refraction of light through lens? Yes, we are able to answer everything. 
using the refraction. But simply we are depending on the parameters. What they are here, focal length, uh, radius of curvature, image distance, object distance, right? So here image distance is fixed, object distance is changing. Compulsory, you need to change the focal length. Without that, you will not get the answer. So what we are expecting, change in the focal length of islands compulsory, right? So that is the concept here. The next question is, how does islands change its focal length? Okay, we have concluded that islands focal length is changing. Who helps that for changing the focal length? That is here, simply ciliary muscles, right? Ciliary muscles are connected to the islands. That ciliary muscles are contract, that means uh, taking strain and gets relaxed. Once they strain, it changes the focal length to the minimum. If they get relaxed, they can change the focal length of islands to the maximum. Right? Here it is. Then, how does this change take place in our eyeball? That changes takes place by here, ciliary muscles only. Ciliary muscles are giving a, a strain to the lens to compress, right? What happens here automatically, it's a shape changes, bulged shape, right? Then here, automatically radius changes. If the strain that uh, ciliary muscles relaxed, then your lens will be adjusted like this. So radius of curvature will be maximum, right? So relaxed and uh, contract, that means strained, then they can change the shape of lens here. Does eye lens form a real image or virtual image? Always we require real image because here, if it is forms virtual image, where you can see who can identify? Optical nerves are connected to the lens? No. Optical nerves are connected to the lens? No. Here only they are connected to the retina. They are uh, what gathering the information, eyes, electromagnetic waves, and transferring that, transmitted through optical nerves to the brain. So here, nobody can identify the virtual image on the lens. So that is the reason to say it is always giving you virtual, diminished, real image on the screen. Right? Are you clear about these all questions? Everything is clear? How to answer these questions? If you have understanding on the internal parts and their functions, then Depending on the refraction of light, you are able to answer all these questions. Without that, it is somewhat difficult for you, right? Then we'll go for another. That is here. How does the image formed on retina helps us to perceive the object without change in shape, size, and color? It is because of what? Optic nerves, right? It is because of what? Optic nerves. Optic nerves also called as receptors. Re receptors are of two types. They are called as rods and uh, cones. Rods identify the intensity of uh, light and cones identifies the color of the light. So that electromagnetic uh, signals transmitted to the brain and the brain can analyze. In this process, they can reverse that uh, image. Gives us right? So in this way, they can Perceive that shape, size, color, eyes, teeth, eyes like your object. Then here, look at that. Is there any limit to change the focal length of eye lens by the ciliary muscles? Yes, we have limit. That limit is what? Minimum is 2.27 and the maximum is what? 2.50 centimeters. This is the range of vision. Right? We have a limit. That is called range of vision. That range is what here, minimum, maximum. So minimum is 2.50, maximum is, sorry, minimum is 2.27, maximum is 2.50. This is called a range of vision. So here, how do you find the maximum and minimum focal length of eye lens? It depends on the position of object in front of you. If the object is placed at a minimum distance, then the focal length will be adjusted by your ciliary muscles to the minimum, right? That minimum distance, for a healthy human eye, eyes decide as least distance of distant vision. So minimum distance to see the object clearly without any strain in front of our eye is called as least distance of distant vision. So in this case, 
if the object is placed at 25 centimeters, that eye lens focal length will be adjusted to the minimum focal length. If you see the sky, it is at infinity distance actually. So that stars are observed at infinity distance. In that case, that maximum focal length will be adjusted by the ciliary muzzle C is equal to 2.50 centimeters. So like this, your eye lens focal length will be adjusted. So here, to find out maximum focal length, object position is at infinity. To find out the minimum focal length, object position will be taken as least distance of distinct vision is about 25 centimeters. Are you clear about these questions given in your textbook? Every question answered by me. Every question answered by me. So now are you able to answer all these questions given in your textbook or not? Yes. So let us go to another topic here. So we got idea what minimum distance, maximum distance to see the object by a healthy human eye, right? What is the minimum focal length? What is the maximum focal length, right? Practically, we can find out. Don't remember them. 2.50, 2.27. We will find out practically, right? So how it will be? Let us see that, right? So here, simply, next topic is, what is the maximum focal length of human eye? Right? To find out maximum focal length, what will be the maximum distance to see the object clearly in front of human eye, healthy human eye? Can anybody answer? What is the distance to maintain here for maximum focal length? When the maximum focal length will be adjusted by the ciliary muscles, to see the object clearly. When you place the object at far distance or very near to you. Answer me, anyone. Far distance. Far distance. So what is the far distance here for a healthy human eye? It is maximum infinite. infinite. Right? So look at here. Okay. That healthy human eye is able to see the infinity distant object. Where will be the image formed by the human eye lens? Eye lens can form the image at? Retina. Retina. 2.50 centimeters. Are you clear about that? On the retina. Is it clear? Remember that. Whatever it may be, if you are able to see in front of you, always for any position of the object, the image will be on the retina at 2.50 centimeters. Got it clarity? Without that, you are unable to see. Got it? How I am considering image distance? Because based on the visibility, the person is able to see or not. That is important. So here, that uh, ray diagram I am drawing here. Right? So this is outline of the eye. Backside. The curved surface is acting like retina. Lens is shown and a protruded surface is shown. Cornea. Right? Then what will be the position of object here? Infinity. So in the infinity situation, we cannot show the object. Only we can consider parallel beam of light rays. So here parallel beam of light rays focused on the eyelids. After refraction, they will be converged. They will be converged. Where that converging point will be located? Can anybody answer? Where the converging point will be? So one ray shown without any deviation. Why? Because it is passing through the optic center of the lens. It remains undeviated. Are you clear about this? Why I shown single ray without any deviation? Yes, clear. Because it is along the principal axis or passing through the optic center remains undeviated. What about that remaining rays parallel to the principal axis? After refraction, they can converge at focus. So where will be the focus in this case? Because that image distance I am able to see. Remember that. That image I am able to see. Where will be that distance? Focal length. Can anybody? Where I can get that uh, image? On the retina? 
बिफोर द रेटिना बियॉन्ड द रेटिना कन्वर्जिंग पॉइंट द पर्सन इज एबल टू सी दैट मींस व्हाट इमेज ऑन द रेटिना सो दैट कन्वर्जिंग लाइट रेस मस्ट बी ऑन द स्क्रीन इफ दे आर नॉट ऑन द स्क्रीन कैन नॉट सी वी कैन नॉट सी राइट सो हियर based on that knowledge i got this diagram this diagram drawn based on the visibility only i am able to see in infinite distance so i consider that if i am able to see the image will be on the retina that is the reason to say converging point will lie on the screen is it clear everyone got it you may response right so based on that only we will draw the red diagram remember visible means the image will be on the screen the image will be on the screen if not visible the image shifted to inside the retina or outside the retina that is so keep it in your mind so i got it based on that what will be the object distance here image distance is 2.50 object distance is infinity so object distance is infinity because the object is placed at infinity distance and the image is obtained at 2.50 cm on the screen so image distance will be considered here 2.50 use the sign convention object distance always negative for a real, real image image distance is positive so that's why i am given u is equal to minus infinity v equal to 2.50 cm then to find out the focal length of the lens i placed the object at a infinite distance maximum possible distance it is so maximum focal length will be adjusted by the ciliary muscles in this case so focal length of the lens is considered as maximum f maximum then substitute in the lens formula that is here 1 by f equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u so this is the formula then substitute that values what is f here f equal to f maximum substitute okay that equal to 1 by what is v here 2.50 with positive sign 2.50 substituted minus 1 by u is equal to what minus infinity right so minus into minus become plus it will remain as 1 by infinity we know what is 1 by infinity equal to can anybody what is 1 by infinity equal to what like zero Zero. So one by infinity equal to zero. I can write. That is because of one by infinity equal to zero. We know mathematically. So substituted, and I got the term one by infinity equal to zero in the relation. So what will will be remains one by f maximum equal to one by two point five zero. If you write reciprocal, what will get? I will get f maximum is equal to two point five zero. I got it. So f maximum is what? Two point five zero centimeters. So this is the maximum focal length adjusted by your ciliary muscles when you see the object at infinity. For the object at infinity distance, the maximum focal length adjusted by your ciliary muscles, right? Eye lens focal length maximum adjusted by your ciliary muscles is about. 2.50 centimeters. Got it? How I got 2.50? How I mentioned? Right? Got it, everyone? No need to remember. If you depend on the observations, what you realizing practically in the nature, with that I got the focal length of eye lens as 2.50 using fourth lesson knowledge. That's it. So here. this will be adjusted by your ciliary muscles if you see the object which is placed at infinity distance are you clear about this max of focal length of eye lens are there any questions immediately go to quick response if nothing is there we we'll go for next topic so everyone is clear about this finding max of focal length right so i'm closing this meeting immediately join in the next meeting